Hi there, and welcome to the Corporate Beanbag. Today we're talking about the true value of AI, the true value of artificial intelligence. Um, it's uh, mid-2024. NVIDIA is roaring. Their, their earnings are beating expectation. Um, and they've got the new Grace Hopper chip coming out, which can do 20 petaflops of processing, um, which is a lot. One petaflop, I think, is about 10 to the 15 or one quadrillion floating points um, per second, um, which is a lot. Um, basically, uh, seven times 10 to the 13 uh, petaflops is what one chat GPT question and answer takes up. So, um, yeah, one of these chips can handle hundreds of these per second. Um, which is incredible, and of course that's what's driving it, artificial intelligence. Um, large language models like uh, ChatGPT. <clears throat> but of course AI is used for other things as well. Um, um, it can be used for very practical things in terms of, say, Amazon getting um, returns um, verified and managed without a whole lot of people having to do that rather tedious work. So that's very clever. Um, the issue is that Amazon, in a, uh, for example, is likely to tell you um, about that, tell you what they've done, um, tell you how clever they are in doing it, as they should, of course, informing the investors and the market about what they can do. But the reality is that there's all those other things um, that, that gives you the true value of artificial intelligence. And the issue there and the reason for this podcast is because it's the things that people don't tell you about, right, that aren't so measurable, that probably um, is where a majority of the true value of artificial intelligence uh, is. Now, there's all sorts of products that can come out later, like companions for young people, older people, anyone really who wants to sort of have a chat uh, with a computer that, that's that's um, not not too clunky or too robotic, so we're aware of all of that. But the reality is that artificial intelligence true value is probably in increasing the value of search, search functions, and the ability for people to answer questions that they may not ask a human being. So in some ways that won't replace human to human interaction or human um, human work because it will open up a whole area of inquiry human inquiry that wasn't there before questions that humans weren't necessarily prepared to ask other humans but they're happy to ask a computer for you know not wanting to seem you know uneducated or um, ill-informed so on and so forth um, or not wanting to tire someone out in a conversation or um, uh, uh, use their time, waste their time, so on and so forth. Whereas you can keep asking the computer questions. You don't have to worry about it getting tired or annoyed with the conversation um, or being diverted from another operation. So you don't have those human constraints. And that means that people will be able to ask many questions, be more likely to get to the answers they want, and cut down those information asymmetries, as we say in economics, and really get to the heart of issues. And that is where the true value of artificial intelligence is at. However, if you look at the marketing, there'll be some very good marketing and some very good points about the value of artificial intelligence in things like sorting out returns for Amazon and, and groups like it and other very practical applications. But ultimately, over time, over the years and over the decades, I suspect that the true value of artificial intelligence is in answering questions that humans didn't ask or were reluctant to ask or reluctant to follow. And that's quite exciting. Anyway, tell me what you think. Andrew at keops.au. That's Andrew at K-E-O-P-S dot A-U. Thanks.